This is a silencer central banish. Uh, Cav is going to shoot a couple rounds through it. Is it okay if we record like with some audio behind each of the shooters? Sure. Go. Go ahead and launch two rounds into the dirt. Roger that. Oh, Coming at you. Don't judge him for being left-handed. <laughs> I don't. It's, it's I'm a good thing. I'm also left-handed, right? Uh, next up, we have Chris Harrison on the next can, which is a Silencer Co. Scythe. Scythe, uh, slightly different sound, still in 308. Go ahead. And then finally, we're going down to Drew with the 10 can, still in 308. Go for it, bud. Hey everyone, James Reeves, TFP TV here at the SIG Next event, talking with my buddy Evan about some new suppressors from SIG. You guys are saying that this is the quietest suppressor that SIG has ever manufactured. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, harking back to the uh, SRD days, everyone loved those cans. They were very quiet, they were awesome for the time, uh, but, you know, 3D printing, we can do better than that now. So, uh, they wanted the shortest can they could get that would still be ultra quiet and then uh then they just said go for it the quietest thing you can possibly make mm -hmm. so we got the endora as the short guy top of pattern on the outside and then the 10 can just kind of your ranger or like range plinking can but maximum sound suppression yeah what are they made out of i mean I, the, it's the hints in the name right yeah, yeah yeah so they're both both uh printed titanium uh so you know great strength for weight and just a good range can 100% titanium? Yeah, 100% titanium. Uh, they do come with the the new uh, Hub 2.0 mounts. This is working with dead air, so it's got this new taper on the back, better sealing, better alignment. Uh, this is steel. We may offer titanium ones in the future for even more reduced weight, but these are already fairly light to start. Yeah, sure, and that's one thing that I noticed, but when I hear titanium, I think heat erosion, I think sparking. Yeah, so uh, as just like range in hunting cans the sparking wasn't too big of a deal as like uh you know most of my time has been spent doing defense cans so you know flash signature is a big deal um not a huge priority on these uh but in our testing of um mostly uh, 300 wind mag and 300 prc like thousands of rounds we've gotten uh, only a few thou of blast baffle erosion mm -hmm. so it's almost no change in performance over life is there a barrel length restriction for these uh, so what we've been doing all of our testing on is um, 20 inch for both 300 PRC and 300 wind mag, uh, but we've sh shot all the way down to 10 inch barrels just to see what happens. So I don't know what our official literature is going to be, but from our internal testing, we've never, you know, exploded one. Right. Okay. Well, that that's always a positive yeah. thing. What if I wanted to put this on like a 7.62 semi-automatic gun, like an AR-10 style rifle? Yep. So you you. You know, it's not stopping you from doing it, but these are designed for bolt guns, so it's maximum back pressure for maximum sound reduction. So you'll just have to kind of balance. Is that worth it? Uh, you'll see later in the day uh, our Hexium line can, uh, another hub like commercial line coming out that's gas gun focused. Before the camera started rolling, we did a little presentation. Yep. Uh, you sounded really proud of this design. This baffle design is kind of a spiral. It's hard to see in this cutaway, but you can kind of see this top lip. Um, it's almost if you took a standard cone baffle and like split it and then added a wall down the middle. And so it's kind of a blend between uh, like our mentality for the defense cans, we call active cross flow. So you grab gas, move it off center line, then redirect it back across center, trying to collide with whatever's moving down the middle, blows more gas off. Uh, and then this baffle design just is kind of like spiral dive, spiral dive, spiral dive. and through printing, we're able to pack a ton of baffles in here, and so that spiral dive action takes, you know, what would be normally a, just a handful of baffles, ton in there, and it gives you a ton of, like, path link, essentially, that gas has to travel before it gets out. Did somebody just draw this up on a whiteboard and say, hey, man, this looks like it would be pretty cool if we did it like this, or I assume... There was some research that oh, went yeah. into the... Uh, we, how did you figure this out? Uh, a ton of CFD. So we have... Um, what is that? Uh, computational fluid dynamics. So it's a simulation... What is that? Uh, <laughs> simulation <laughs> software. Um, yeah, so it's... Uh, we have like a huge server we, we run all of our stuff on. And so this is... Um, there's some defense cans that are, you know, kind of out in the wild at the moment, but, you know, not for sale. 
uh, that was kind of the start of this baffle. Um, and then over the past couple of years, we've just refined it through simulation and through testing. We have uh, a, all of our own printing now in-house, and so we can turn prototypes in like a matter of days. So we have an idea, confirm it seems good on the computer, and then we just go print a bunch of them and see what happens. Caliber compatibility, are we doing just like 30 cal variants? And if so, like up to what caliber are we talking? Yeah, so at the moment there's um, just 30 cal bores. Uh, there's plans to do bigger, like 338, maybe 375. Um, we've tested up to 300 PRC. We're going to do 300 Norma Mag. That's on the list. Um, but yes, so far, if it fits in a long action, Magnum rated kind of deal. Uh, we also have this uh, front attachment method. So we have some Mirage heat shields, uh, burn guards, muzzle brakes, uh, glass breakers, not overly relevant for a hunting can, but you'll see on our more gas gun focused cans. Um, this is something we've been working on for a while. Defense customers have been asking for it. We've decided to bring it over to the commercial market as well. How much are these gonna cost? When did they come out? Uh, so the short guys, uh, this is gonna be $8.99. This is gonna be $9.99. Um, and they're supposed to be, like you should be able to buy them in the next like six weeks. Yeah, I, I mean, this is to me crazy looking at silencer technology and where we are with pricing, I mean, it's not just you guys. I mean, to me, that's that's insanely low price. But, I mean, it, I just can't believe how, like, I can get a 3D printed titanium suppressor, the quietest one you guys have ever made, for, like, 999 MSRP. So that's pretty wild. Yeah, that's all from bringing all of our printing in-house. Yeah, sure. I, yeah. I can imagine there's some cost savings there. Well, look, Evan, you did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for yeah. the presentation, guys. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We're bringing you more from SIG next.